In America, African American children don't receive much media attention when they go missing. It's usually left up to their communities to rally together using the resources available to them to help in whatever way they can. The purpose of this video is to give this case more exposure. I'm going to examine the events that led up to the disappearance of two little girls from Chicago, 10-year-old Tiana Bradley and her little sister, 3-year-old Diamond Bradley. Hopefully, some good will come out of this. 20 years ago, back in 2001, on a Friday morning, Diamond's father, George Washington, arrived at their home around 4.30 a.m where he stayed until he took their mother Tracy to work between approximately 6 a.m. and 6.30 a.m. Tracy worked at Robert Taylor Park. She prepared lunches for the summer camp kids. The initial plan was for George to come back after her shift and pick Tracy up. They would return to the apartment for the girls and then they would set off for a camping trip to Lake Schaefer in Indiana. Tracy has two other daughters, Victoria and Rita. Victoria and Rita weren't going on the trip and had been dropped off at their grandmother's place the evening before. George split his time between Tracy's home and then his mother's. Meanwhile, Tianda and Diamond remained at home alone, leaving Tianda to babysit her younger sister. Once Tracy's shift ended, George went to pick she and some of her colleagues up. He dropped them off first before he and Tracy went back to her apartment sometime between 11 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. The front door was locked, but the girls were not home when they returned. What was left in their place was a note written by Tiana on the back of the couch explaining that the girls were going to go to Tianda school and then they were going to go to Lake Meadows Shopping Center across the street from the school. Tianda was in summer school at Doolittle Elementary, just a few blocks away. So her mother didn't think it was particularly strange. What she did find strange was the fact that Tianda left her a note. Not only was it odd that Tianda had left a note, but something was very off about the note. Everything, the spelling, the grammar, was too perfect for a girl attending summer school to improve her reading and writing to have written. It was unlikely that Tianda would leave a note. If the girls had left the apartment, Tianda would have called her mom's cell phone. Tracy assumed Tianda may have just taken Diamond with her to school instead of skipping class but school officials said she never showed up. This was not like Tianda, a very lovely little girl who ran track at school, loved dancing, and is fondly remembered by her cousin as speeding down the streets on her bicycle. Gifted athletically, she won local awards for her running and gymnastics abilities. She wanted to be a dancer. Very pretty little diamond was remembered as a quiet, humble little girl who always had a sweet little smile and always jumping on the couch and sneaking food from others. Tianda's favorite song was Queen's I Want It All and her favorite movie was Blade. She also enjoyed playing dolls with her other sisters. Rita, who was 12 at the time of the girl's disappearance and Victoria, who was eight, were not home at this time. Rita and Victoria were staying at their grandmother's and planning to celebrate Victoria's birthday, which was on Saturday. Their mother later said she had made plans to take the girls on a camping trip to Indiana with Diamond's father, her boyfriend. The plans never materialized, and it's no wonder because Tianda and Diamond went missing. Within hours, it became apparent that they had vanished. Tracy later testified that she scoured the neighborhood looking for them, but nothing materialized. It is not clear how much George contributed to the search. 
Tracy submitted a missing person report to police on Friday night around 6.30 p.m. Only 12 hours after telling the girls goodbye that morning. Before calling the police, Tracy borrowed $20 from a neighbor so she could buy food at a nearby store. A receipt from the store is stamped 1221. Several different children in the neighborhood later testified that they saw the sisters playing near their home and in the school playground around noon. But none of the faculty or staff at the school confirmed seeing them there. Tracy's other two daughters, Victoria and Rita, couldn't tell them where their sisters might have gone either. They didn't know. Diamond had left behind her backpack, suggesting they didn't plan to be gone long and nothing was taken, suggesting that it was not a runaway situation. Nor was there any history amongst the children of running away. Security cameras at the entrance of the apartment complex didn't catch anything. The cameras had been pushed upward, according to the family's private investigator, who goes by the name P. Foster. He has worked on the case pro bono for 20 years. He said some residents may have wanted to hide criminal activity. Many people saw the girls the night before they went missing. They were at home when Tracy had two friends over to drink and watch the Cubs baseball game. The friends were questioned twice and they both said the girls were at the home when they left around 10 p.m. There was a report that a neighbor in their building came by after the friends left, but he never went past the front of the apartment and never saw the girls, according to police. Tracy's boyfriend, George, came to the apartment around 3 a.m., stayed for a while, then took Tracy to work around 6.30 a.m., investigators say. Tianda and Diamond were left alone under strict orders from their mother not to let anyone, no matter who they were, into the apartment. Classmates say they saw Tianda and Diamond at the nearby Doolittle Elementary School playground that morning, according to family, who believe the girl slipped out that morning but returned home once the other kid children headed in for the start of summer school. The family says that Tianda left a voicemail on her mother's cell phone around 8.17 a.m asking if she had permission to let a man in. Tianda used the first name in the message that both Tracy's boyfriend and the neighbor shared. The girls, however, regularly called the neighbors by a nickname. In the alleged voicemail, Tianda said a man named George was at the door and asking if she should let him in. It is not clear which George she is referring to since the neighbor and Diamond's father are both named George. The voicemail is mentioned in a 2007 televised interview but does not appear in any other reports published by police. A place where the police discussed or referenced the voicemail cannot be found either. The family says that several people heard the voicemail but it mysteriously disappeared. Its existence cannot be verified. Tiana is alleged to have said, Mama, this is Tianda. Mom, pick up the phone. George is at the door. Can I open the door? He said that we are going to Jules to pick up the cake there. We're coming to pick you up from work. Jules is a local market and the cake was supposed to be for their other sister Victoria's birthday. The camping trip in Indiana would mean that they would miss Victoria's birthday, which was odd. The boyfriend confirmed to a national newspaper that he took Tracy to work that morning, but denied showing up at the apartment later when the girls allegedly called their mom to say someone was at the door. Family alleged Chicago police accidentally deleted the voicemail off the cell phone when they brought it down to the station. Law enforcement sources say they've never heard it and could not confirm that an officer deleted the message. Relatives said family, friends, and law enforcement came in and out of the apartment before investigators cleared the space to take fingerprints and gather other evidence several days after the girls were gone. The girl's great aunt Sheila Bradley Smith said, it wasn't taped off at all. That to me was a valuable mistake. Police investigators 
familiar with the case, could not confirm that the scene was not cleared and searched earlier. Tracy's boyfriend, who was also Diamond's father, was looked at as a suspect. He was close to the girls. That day, July 6, 2001, police took Tracy and her boyfriend in for about 22 hours of separate questioning. They both took lie detector tests and passed, police sources said. The family's detective, Foster, said the boyfriend's test was inconclusive. Tracy and her boyfriend quickly got lawyers, eliminating opportunities for investigators to talk openly with them. Police said the FBI still remain in periodic touch with them both. Several pieces of evidence pointed investigators in the boyfriend's direction. Investigators found hair matching Tianda and Tracy's DNA in his vehicle's trunk. He told police he would sneak the girls in drive-ins in the city, although investigators said the closest drive-ins at the time were in the suburbs. The boyfriend offered law enforcement conflicting stories about his actions on the day the girls went missing. Four teens and three neighbors said they saw him setting fire to something in a 55-gallon drum in his backyard garage about 10 miles south of the girls' home, then putting the barrel into his trunk and driving away. He worked as a machinist and welder. The police said he claimed he never burned anything in a drum or even had a drum. He did say that he was doing refurbishments on his home and dumped debris and garbage containers in Chicago's Washington Park. Police searched the Southside Park but found nothing. The girls' family pressed prosecutors under then Cook County State's attorneys, Richard Devine and Anita Alvarez, to charge the boyfriend. But the circumstantial evidence was simply not enough to go further, according to two sources involved in the investigation. The boyfriend denied being involved in the girl's disappearance and that he ever took a DNA test to establish paternity. He claimed he tried to help investigators find them at the beginning. I don't know who did anything. I just know that I had nothing to do with it, he said of the girl's disappearance. He said he gave investigators his pictures and videotapes of the girls and surrendered the keys to his car and house. He admits to investigators finding recently purchased rubber gloves, contractor bags, and bleach from Home Depot that investigators said could have been a way of cleaning up after the girls went missing. Police have the receipt for that purchase. The boyfriend also said, that was 20 years ago and everyone tried to blame me. All three of them, the family, investigators, and the media ganged up on him because they couldn't solve it. The family and investigators had other suspects as well. A man who was a registered sex offender and spent time around the girls dedicated a book to them, their great aunt revealed. Some family members said Tracy gave $5 to a relative that day to go watch the girls at the apartment. Others alleged the neighbor whom the girls had a nickname for suggested something bad would happen to them if Tracy kept leaving them alone. Another theory is that a, Mor a Moroccan man rumored to be Tiana's father had something to do with it. Family said that the children who reported seeing the girls on the playground that morning said they saw a fair-skinned man in a trench coat approach the girls and speak briefly with Tianda. The unknown Moroccan man had been paying child support for Tianda under the mistaken belief that he was her father. Tracy filed a paternity lawsuit against the man a month before the girls vanished, but the case would later unveil that he was not actually biologically related to Tianda and had been wrongfully paying child support for some time. It is not clear when he learned the truth, but hairs were found in his trunk that DNA testing matched to the Bradley family. It could not, however, show whether the hair was one of the girls or their mother. A reporter traveled to Morocco to search for the girls to no avail. The family had suspicions about the note Tianda wrote. According to forensic tests by the FBI in 2001, 
the Tianda, write the note found on the couch and not under the rest. That's why the family suspects Tianda was coached by someone she trusted in writing the note. Her writing a full letter with correct grammar is not appropriate for her. I'm quite sure whoever took them, she was very comfortable with them. The girl's Aunt April Jackson said, Police have repeatedly re-interviewed and re-investigated the extensive family surrounding the girls. They have even searched the girl's great-grandfather's Wisconsin home. Nothing was ever found. Tips still pour in ever so often. In 2004, a firefighter said he saw the girls in an Indianapolis park. In 2013, a woman from Gary, Indiana contacted the girl's great aunt and said she might have relevant information for the case. She felt compelled to report that on that day, years before her boyfriend returned to the home, clearly upset, saying he has made a mistake in talking about killing an unknown female who had seen something. In 2019, a woman from Texas claimed to be Tianda, but the claim was later proved to be untrue. The police say that the mother has become less cooperative as time passed. They say that she pushed an officer in 2002 and was taken to the station handcuffed. The officer claimed he was just asking her to accompany him to the police station to discuss new leads they had uncovered. Police started to question her, but her attorney put an end to it. After this, Tracy became less willing to work with police and failed to appear at several appointments with them. Even so, she is not a suspect in the case. At the time the children went missing, Tianda had a quarter-sized scar from a burn on her left forearm and frequently used the word girl and said bye as baby bye. Diamond had a scar on the left side of her head. July 6, 2021 marked 20 years since Tianda and Diamond disappeared. Diamond would be 30 today and Diamond would be 23. It's been long enough for this family to go without answers. This family deserves peace. If you know anything about the case, please contact the FBI. All of this is alleged. Thanks for watching.